Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan, and the game we're talking about today is Super Mario World! So Super Mario World is probably one of my personal top favorite games of all time, probably in my top three. Because when all of your favorite franchises made the jump from the NES to the SNES, Super Mario World was one of those games that took a quantum leap over something that was already great, which was Super Mario Bros. 3. So take everything you loved about Super Mario Bros. 3 and make it a hundred times better. And I had no idea how they were going to even top Super Mario Bros. 3 back in the day. So when the Super Nintendo and Super Mario World came out in August of 1991, unfortunately I would not have a Super Nintendo until December of 1992. So I would have to play Super Mario World at a friend's house. And I remember I was at my friend's party and then we had like 10 people gathered over to Super Nintendo playing Super Mario World and I was like, oh my god, that's Super Mario World, it's so amazing! And the kid playing it would not let anyone else play. Yeah, I was mad about it back then, but that really proved how awesome Super Mario World was when kids would not let other kids play it. Especially me. And you know, all my friends at school would talk about it, especially about Yoshi, the dinosaur. And I was like, Yoshi? Like you mean Yoshi? Like Hamato Yoshi from Ninja Turtles? No, Yoshi, the dinosaur that Mario rides in the game. Have you played it, Ryan? Not yet. And then I remember Easter vacation of 1992 when I was in the fifth grade. You know, Easter vacation and then you high schoolers and college students call it spring break. And then us working people call it another work week. So I remember going to a Ma and Pa video rental where you can rent the Super Nintendo with any game you want for about a weekend. So when I rented that thing and I hooked it up to my TV, I was playing till two in the morning. And then my dad came down and said, go to sleep. So the Super Nintendo was my first experience going through a console jump. And like I said before, everything I loved about Super Mario Bros. 3 was enhanced by like a thousand, no, I mean like a million. Like, holy shit, the graphics were better. The gameplay was better. The levels, the depth, I mean, everything was better. So in Super Mario Bros. 3, you had eight different worlds. But now in Super Mario World, you have eight different worlds, but they're all interconnected together and you can go back and forth between them. Like, I was really blown away that they did a world map, kind of like Zelda, but in Mario style. I mean, this is awesome! So I remember playing that first level and being totally blown away that I had a controller with six buttons. Like, holy crap, it was like a big jump from the four buttons on the NES. I can totally like spin jump, I can store items in the top, and then like the graphics were like, whoa. I mean, the graphics by today's standards aren't that great, but wow, the graphics were like a huge jump from Super Mario Bros. 3. So I remember seeing the bonsai bill being blown in my face, I was like, oh shit, what do I do? And I didn't realize you had to duck inside that hole, so I got killed by that the first time. <laughs> so I remember the second level on the island, where you get Yoshi, and then you have to kick the Koopa shell, and then it knocks all those other Koopa shells, giving you an extra life. And then you can control Yoshi, then you can eat everything. You can eat the fire flowers, you can eat the Koopas and spit their shells out, you can eat the Goombas, and then you can uh, eat the moles, and then there's a charging chuck at the end of the level. Hey, there's football Koopas now! Touchdown! So I remember the first castle where you fight Iggy Koopa and then you jump on those fences and you can actually knock the Koopas into the lava and see them fall in. Wow, it looks kind of morbid actually. And I also do remember the fortresses and the Koopa kids were definitely a lot harder in this game than they were in Super Mario Bros. 3. I remember Morton Koopa Jr. and Ludwig von Koopa and Roy Koopa would like go on the walls and then drop down and then if they hit the ground like there would be like an earthquake. And I remember Lemmy Koopa and Wendio Koopa had the pipes and you had to guess which one they would come out of. Larry and Iggy were basically the same but they were actually a little harder to beat than they were in Super Mario Bros. 3. Like you couldn't just beat them by hopping on them three times. You had to knock them into the lava and especially Larry was hard to hit. And if Larry's fortress wasn't hard enough already. And the biggest power-up that everybody remembers about this game is the feather that gives you the cape. 
So I remember getting the cape to fly like the raccoon tail in Mario 3, but I remember having a lot of trouble like going down, then using the air current to bring myself back up so I can kind of fly forever. But once I got good at that, the game was just so much more fun. And a lot of levels were easy to beat once you actually knew how to fly with the cape. I remember getting the secret level in Soda Lake where you had to fly under the bridge with all the buzz saws, but most of the time I would get that secret with Yoshi. I would kind of just be an asshole. I would have Yoshi fly down, then I would sacrifice him, and then I would jump on the platform. But then I got good enough at the game to fly under it, and that was a huge sense of accomplishment. <laughs> So let's talk about the level design in this game. Now, I thought the level design in Super Mario Bros. 3 was ingenious. It was very innovative, very awesome. And then they took that a step further. Like, you know, we had side-scrolling levels. We had, and like the ghost houses where you had to fight giant boo ghosts. Like you couldn't solve these levels straightforwardly like the rest of the levels. You had to find ways to find other doors in order to beat them. And they definitely weren't as straightforward, but solving them was actually really fun. And just like the previous game, yes, the boos are back. Where you stare at them, they won't attack you. But if you stare away, they're gonna attack you. Hey! And I also remember the fortress levels where you fight the Reznors at the end. Like, I didn't know how to beat these things at first. I tried to jump on top of them. I couldn't beat them that way. I tried to shoot fireballs at them. I obviously couldn't beat them that way. But then I discovered, oh, you had to hit them from the bottom. Well, that's not really self-explanatory. <laughs> Yeah, and about the level design in this game, yeah, it definitely scales up the more you play the game, but I never feel like the levels get like super difficult. I mean, the levels do get hard at times, but you can easily persevere through them. I never feel like they get frustrating, especially when I repeat the game. And what's great about this game, it has a lot of good replay value because the levels are just never that super difficult. Like Super Mario Bros. 3 has a lot of difficult levels. Super Mario Bros. 1 had a lot of difficult levels, but Super Mario World just, it just feels just right. Even the last couple levels aren't even that difficult. And one of my favorite things about this game, when you defeat one of the Koopa kids, Mario destroys their castle in like one of the funniest unique ways. And my favorite one was when he tried to use the dynamite on that one castle and it blows up on him. I remember like laughing my ass off so much during that one. And I definitely remember discovering the Star World and the Special World. And the Special World was awesome because you can just kind of wait there and hear the original Mario Brothers theme. And especially the levels in the special world were crazy. I remember that one level where you have to get a balloon and then that's the only way you could beat the level and you have to be really, really careful through that. And I remember one level where you can actually just kind of fly through it. It's not that difficult. Yeah, like a lot of the levels in the special world were difficult, but not super difficult. And then when you actually beat the special world, the entire world changes. And what's also awesome about this game, like all the worlds are named after food, like Chocolate Island, Vanilla Dome, Soda Lake, although you probably don't want to drink anything from the Soda Lake. Especially Rip Van Fish. Fuck that guy. And also what was kind of funny about this game, I remember trying to get all 96 goals, but I would always end up with 87 for some reason. But then I realized, oh wait, I have to beat the Star Worlds normally. Yeah. I didn't discover that for the longest time. And also remember, the sunken airship was actually pretty creepy. And I don't remember any of the airships sinking in Super Mario Bros. 3, but I guess they just did. Now let's talk about Bowser's Castle and the final battle with Bowser. Now Bowser's Castle, I remember the first door I would go in would actually be that door where you had all the Koopas on the fence and then you get past them. And then I would always go in the fifth door where the spikes come down. Although at first I would go through the charging Chuck door for some reason. I have beaten all the doors, but I'd rather go through the easy ones to be honest. And it's kind of cool. You could see the ninjas from Super Mario Bros. 2 right before you fight Bowser. And then the final battle with Bowser. And now if you thought the battle with Bowser at the end of Super Mario Bros. 3 was intense, this one makes that one look like a cakewalk. Now what's actually cool about this battle is that they get rid of all of the stuff at the top like your score and the timer except for your reserve item and it really feels like you're alone. Like alone fighting Bowser at the top of his castle just by yourself like there's nobody there to help you like Mario's like all right, I'm going to face Bowser by myself. And holy shit, I remember 
I didn't know what to do to fight Bowser. I thought I had to like fly on top of him and hit him like that, but that obviously didn't work. And then I discovered you had to throw the Mecha Koopas on top of him. And then it was so cool when he goes all the way back and then he zooms all the way up and you had to pause it just at like at the right time, like tick! And then the fight gets even more intense, like Bowser throws like a giant bowling ball. And then after that, his clown car gets all pissed off at you and starts stomping all over the place. You're like, holy shit! But then you beat Bowser, you rescue the princess. And then the ending was really cool. You could see Mario traversing through all the worlds with the princess riding on Yoshi with that really awesome tune. Da -da 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 and then you see all the enemies, and that is Super Mario World. Wow! So yeah, Super Mario World. Now Super Mario World takes everything you love about Super Mario Bros. 3 and makes it a hundred times better. I mean, the levels are larger, the depth of the game is larger, the world is larger, the boss fights are definitely a lot more intense than Super Mario Bros. 3, which is actually a good thing. And also, there's so much variety in the graphics, so much variety in the worlds, like you have the ghost houses, the fortresses, and you know, all the food-related places you can go. I mean, wow, and all the secrets you can discover if you want to get all 96 worlds. It's definitely going to take you a while, but you feel so compelled to find everything. I can literally talk about this game forever, and deservedly so, because Super Mario World was one of the games that made the huge quantum leap from the NES to the Super NES. Yeah, don't get me wrong, we got a lot of great games after Super Mario World, but you know they haven't captured like that first time quantum leap awesomeness that Super Mario World had in comparison to Super Mario Bros. 3. So where can you get this game? Actually, where can't you get this game? You can get this game on the Virtual Console for the Wii, the Wii U, or the 3DS. I definitely recommend getting it on the new 3DS so you can play it on the go. And also, there's a really awesome Game Boy Advance version, too. Yeah, so that wraps up this episode of Awesome Video Game Memories about Super Mario World. And if you have any memories about this game, make sure to leave those in the comments below. Take care! Having fun? Well, you guys should totally go check us out at twitch.tv slash battlegeekplus. Please support us at patreon.com slash battlegeekplus.